50,000 people in the, in the country told us what we could tell. We're going back 15 years now, right? 50,000 people, the newspaper editor, this is the top newspapers in the country, pretty much told us what we could tell. Just broadcast and we pick up their, their message. And so what we had was filtered through these very, through, through, through this very uh, tight uh, net, this, this, uh, this um, hourglass of information was filtered uh, by a very small number of people. And there was a lot of good things about that. One of the best things was the shared experience, right? We'd get up every morning, everyone in the same city would read the same newspaper, the same articles, we would all have the same perspective on the news, the same view of what was going on in the world, and then we'd go to work and we'd talk that day about what we read in the newspaper that morning, or what we saw in Walter Cronkite the novel the night before, or all of these shared experiences we had that shaped our view of the world around us. But now, now media looks like this. And so we don't have the shared experience anymore. We have lots and lots of individual experiences. This has good ramifications and bad ramifications. One of the bad ramifications is polarization. One of the reasons we have so much political uh, uh, polarity in this country right now is that people can choose to listen just to the voices they want to listen to, those that reflect their point of view. And so it's possible for us to be very narrow-minded in this world. But for those of us who are information geese, it's possible for us to have enormous new sources of information. The consequence of that, though, is that we have trouble knowing whom to trust. Because there are 10,000 new top 10 lists out there every day, and we know that none of them are right. So who do we trust in this world? And that's one of the big problems. We trust these guys. And that's one, uh, another big change. And I think if you go back to why social media happened, it was because of Google. And Google said, Google, the, the, the big innovation Google brought upon the market is it said that content was more important than brand. That you didn't have, the size of your circulation list, the power of your marketing budget didn't matter. It was the quality of what you said. And it was the first really useful search engine. And so people began to put their trust in Google, that Google would give them the information that they wanted. And their trust was, and they began to question <coughs> the traditional sources of trust. And as these traditional sources, such as the mainstream media, have declined and are continuing to be in long-term decline, we are having this question of, of who do we trust. So Google's big innovation really was to say that content is all that matters. And if you have been watching the latest revision of the Google search algorithm, the so-called Hummingbird revision, they are taking this to a new level now, where it is, the, it is not only quality of content that matters, but also the relevance of that content to the individual preferences expressed by the user. Google becoming a, a, a life, a, a sort of a life coach, uh, a, an, answer for, an answer for any question that you've got. Not providing search results, but providing answers for questions. And so this creates a whole disruption of the fabric of trust, because Google increasingly defines who we trust. That top search result is who Google thinks we want. And increasingly, because it gets better and better, that is who we want. What this does is it creates people out of nowhere who exert enormous influence. You heard some talk this morning about the influencer relations program. These are very important, particularly for B2B companies. Because what you have is the more you <coughs> niche, the more focused your market is, the faster these new influencers will rise up. This is Bruce Schneier. Bruce Schneier is a computer security expert. If I type security expert into Google, Bruce Schneier comes up number one. Now, that may not be the true for you because Google delivers different results for different people. But he's certainly in the top 10 for most searches on security expert. Why is that? Well, he has Schneier on security, which is his blog. It's his live stream. It's where he shares information about everything around him. His talks, his lectures, the books he's read, his observations and experience in a taxi cab, he shares it all on Schneier on security. And he's got huge traffic with an estimated uh, with 150,000 newsletter subscribers for a newsletter that he produces all by himself. All by, he does this all by himself. He's got numbers that, that media operations would be jealous of having, and he's built this all by himself by simply sharing his expertise profusely whenever the opportunity presents itself. Now what happens, look at the citations in mainstream media. Why is that? Why does Bruce Schneier get quoted 115 times in the New York Times? Because when the computer security reporter at the Times goes to Google and looks for an expert, guess who comes up first? And so Bruce gets the call. And so now Bruce is on the Rolodex of every, of every computer security reporter in the world. 
And you talk about the value of media relations. This is one of the values of, media, of social media, media relations, that is, is often overlooked, is the fact that it is a great way to get your expertise in front of the mainstream media who can amplify your message by, by orders of magnitude. The result of all this is, is an inversion in influence, where influence is no longer exerted from the top down, increasingly it is exerted from the bottom up. Now certainly top down influence is important and always will be important, but it has been supplemented now by this, this uh, sort of crowdsourcing of influence in which people as a group decide what's important and what to recommend. And that changes the traditional sales funnel. The traditional sales funnel looked like this, which was very top down, suspects, qualified prospects, all the way down to new clients. We intercepted or we, or we interrupted people at a time when we could somehow uh, get their attention and get them into our sales funnel. We assumed that they knew very little and that we would be the ones who would educate them, hopefully toward a solution in our favor. But the inversion of the funnel looks like this, and that is that the funnel begins where the people are. They're on LinkedIn, they are on, uh, they are on Facebook, they are on Twitter, they are on Spiceworks. Who here has ever heard of Spiceworks? Anyone here in the IT field? Spiceworks is an IT community for, uh, it's a community for small, primarily for small and mid-sized business IT professionals. Six-year-old company is a media company. It has 2.7 million members, and it has, it gives away software, and then monetizes the audience through, through media, through advertising, marketing services, and other traditional media functions. 2.7 million members, and they're absolutely rabid crazy about Spiceworks. And what it is doing is monetizing this model, which is, it, it, it has corrected, it has collected an audience it has created an audience, and now it is bringing in advertisers to reach that audience because it has their attention and it has their trust. And this happens in communities all over the place. There are communities in, in every industry you can imagine. There are online communities for truckers and for plumbers and for radiologists and for dentists. They're out there. And these are places that people have come because they trust each other, because the value of, of the information that we get from our peers is the, most is the most useful information we've ever had. That, by the way, goes back as long as I can remember in this field. I can remember surveys, reader surveys 30 years ago, where the number one most trusted source of information was peers. What has happened now is that it's very, very easy for us to get information from our peers. So we have places we can go to get that honest, unvarnished information. We don't have to listen to somebody with a message because we don't trust that message. We trust more people we've never met, but people whose professional credibility is, is reflected in their resume. So the challenge for marketers is to find these communities, go where these people are, to become, a, to become a trusted and valued part of the community, to engage, and ultimately to dive them into your sales funnel as someone